Hey buddies, what's happening? Welcome to a new video on my channel and today we're gonna do the suspension on the Audi TT finally. So that is how it looks right now. So we're gonna have some adjusters at here at the domes later on when we install a new suspension. It's a coilover kit. We're gonna take a look at that in a minute. But what we're gonna do right now, we uh, you want to see the height before and after we install it and also the angle. So the car is standing pretty much even right now. So we're gonna measure here in the center of the wheel basically. 27 inches on the dot. On this side, same shit, 27 inches. And we got some new parts in coming too. <laughs> Alright, in the front we got 27. That car is pretty even actually. 27 inches too. A little bitty 5.3 in here as well. And then here we got 27. A little bit under 27 inches. Probably because the engine is all the way on the right side. No, it's also 27. Now, alright. So that's about the height before. We're gonna lower it, but not too much. Uh, we're gonna make the optic later on with the uh, fender flares and shit like that. Uh, let's take a look at the drift angle, the steering angle. Okay. Ah. I hit my elbow. Okay, that's pretty much all the steering angle I have. So what we see here is we got uh, a lot of positive camber because the, the wheel is in turnex so it tilts outside and in drifting that is why a lot of drift cars have negative camber because they actually drive sideways and when you sideways the wheel is actually straight and has the most uh, grip on the ground but that is about racing wheel alignment we're going to do that at a lighter point uh, but for right now how can we measure that? maybe your angle finder thing. It's kind of hard to see unless you're looking at it from the top. Film it from the top. I have my angle finder. Okay, how are we gonna do that basically? Like this? And I would say that is the angle I guess we have right now. But also, how much was that? One hundred forty-three. I think we can find it like that because that's the number I had there a minute ago. Also, but I also where's the tape measure? Because when the when the wheel turns, it comes closer to the outside, basically. So we could also measure, like from the rim to this line here from the fender. See that? Film that. So when we measure it later again, this is 17 and a half. And basically, if that wheel comes turns more, we should see it more like at 16. Or 12 or 6. I think we're looking for degrees. Yeah. Alright, anyways, we just want to see what's going to change later on. Uh, I would say we do the front suspension first because that's a lot of work. And then the back, basically, uh, I'm going to do the fuel filler neck too when the wheel is off because then we can get to everything. Anyways, um, Alright, let's get to the front, I guess. Okay, so we got the control arms off. Basically, that's the old control arm. Holy shit, look at this. No wonder it was kind of loose in the front. Everything broken out already. Anyways, so that's the old control arm. And uh, basically, 
We're gonna upgrade it for these control arms. Fully adjustable. So we got adjuster here and here. Uh, uni balls on here. Pretty nice. Unfortunately, I don't have the right ball joints right now because they are from a Mark IV S32, I think. Or it fit everything except for the S32. Anyways, they're from a Golf Mark IV, basically. And how we see right here, I got already one side in there. Uh, didn't have it all the way in right now. Just like that to see how it fits. Uh, it fits actually pretty nice in here. And like I said, I don't have the ball joints, but I right, how you see here already. So all that shit comes out far more than before, okay? Okay, but for right now, I'm gonna put, we have to put the zip ties back on there. Otherwise I'm gonna lose the thing. Yeah, for right now we're gonna concentrate on this. So this is the old suspension basically, right? And the new suspension right here in the box. The wrong bolt is that a front? Yeah, that's a front shock. Okay, fully adjustable. Uh, and this one is peeking out at the top in the engine bay basically, where you can put it softer or harder when you're at the track. So, really good accessible. Um, yeah, but that is what we're gonna get in there. It's a Rev9 Hyper Street 2. I'm not sponsored or anything, but um, that's what you're gonna put in there. Alright, so let's get the coilovers in there. Control arms, I'm gonna do that Sunday probably when I'm here alone. <coughs> and then we're gonna take a look at the back. So that's a new front coilover shock assembly basically. Uh, it's two times adjustable for once. This thing spindles in here, and then this one you can adjust the uh, stiffness basically of the spring. Um, we're gonna put, or we have put a new uh, top mount kit on here. Uh, everything new, the adjuster is out right now because of the assembly. Then also, put it on right here for a uh, more drift angle. Don't film that mess. <laughs> Alright, so for more drift angle, I decided to go 30 millimeters, about 2 point inches, 2.1 or something inches closer to the inside so I drilled a new hole in here tapered it the same like this one so that brings the the whole thing closer to the inner side of the turning point and turns it more because it has more uh, yeah not not that much leverage it has more force no gives you more angle that gives you more angle yeah. because it's basically pushing the same way out just closer so it mo makes more way basically than when it does it outside right it's, uh, it's the same principle if you have an arm like that you get an arm like that and you push it down two centimeters here that makes not a big difference but if you push it down two centimeters here that makes way more way basically because you push it down closer to the, the turning point basically and <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it is man that's physics basically so yeah we got that closer to the center more drift angle what also means you need more force basically to steer you need more power to steer uh, because you don't have that much leverage because you're closer to the turning point so also we have here <coughs> a one inch drop on the front subframe like we have seen in one of the uh, earlier videos where I made room for the engine. Yeah, so we dropped that down and uh, at some point I have to get adjustable sway bar links too. But for right now we put it together like that. I cannot find my new tie rod right now because I I just don't know where it is. So I have to search that but for right now we're gonna put the suspension back in and when we have the front suspension in we take a new look how uh, the high is. The hop, what was it before? 70 27. 27, yeah. All the way around. All the way around. 27 highness, and then we had the the angle was 143. What we measured with that stupid thing. Anyways, all right. So we're gonna assemble that, and then we're gonna see this again. Front suspension is in. Car is a little bit lower than before. 
So what we have here is uh, the adjusters at the top, right? Uh, we tried it already out and we laughed pretty hard about it because if you put that on hard, you have basically no suspension at all and it's just like rock hard. But how it is right now, we have a little nice rebound, what is a bit nice baseline to go to the track and figure out what is basically the best setup for that. Uh, we probably go a little bit higher, but for right now, where's the measurement tape? Over there somewhere. Not here. Alright, so it was before it was. What was it before? 27, 37, something like that. 27, all the way around, right? 24 and a half. If it is 24 and a half, we dropped it down two and a half inches. 24 and a half. We probably go up half an inch, I would say, because right now underneath the car we have not much clearance, and if we bounce, we're gonna hit the subframe. Not right now. It, it's not bottom bottoming. Bo bo it's not bottoming out. Is that, mm. is that what you say? Yeah. Yeah. It's not bottoming out, but uh, it's getting close. But uh, anyways, oh yeah. Let's see. What our angle does now. Pull that to the front a little bit. Ah, my foot! <laughs> I rolled over my own foot. Ah, oh, shit, I did it again. <laughs> Maybe it is already a little late. Alright, let me turn it and see how the angle is. Oh, I need way more force to turn that wheel. the angle right now it, it looks like the same like before no maybe a little bit more you remember the measurement we did earlier me neither oh no I think I remember was it not 17 and then I said it would be nice if it is like 15 or 14. Anyways, it's still 17. <laughs> no, it's not. Actually, we are pretty much at 16. So we came one inch closer and we are uh, actually hitting the frame inside with the tire a little bit. But um, with the other control arms, we're gonna have more uh, cambering it out at the bottom more. So when it moves uh, out at the bottom, we have a little bit more room up there. Where's the angle finder? Let's do the angle finder thing again. Two days. Yeah, but I didn't get a proof. It should be at the track on Friday. Lanier's open on Friday. Yeah? Yeah. They're running this track. You never know. So that was 143 before. No, it's 140. So actually. It's a little better, three degrees more, four degrees more. And I also think that measurement what we do with this is not really that accurate. I think we should paint a straight line and then... Yeah, we should have done that before. Before we turned the uh, uh, tie rod ends out like 15 turns. I felt like it. Alright, so well, that's the front suspension for right now. Um, I'm gonna do the control arm and it's getting new tie rods because I still can't find the tie rods. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that Saturday, Sunday. 
Yeah, and also... It's gonna be at the track on Friday. Stop saying that. <laughs> you remember the uh, right Baldwin is loose. Yeah, swap the Baldwin's anyways. So yeah, I have drawing. to order them first. Because I, I got ball joints. But Amazon Prime way. I'm gonna be here tomorrow. That's actually true. Look at that Camino. El Camino? No, what is no, it actually? Ranchero. Ranchero? Ranchero. Ranchero. Yeah. Ford version of El Camino. How high it is in the front. It's a boat. <laughs> it is like a boat. It drives like it. When you when you drive, it actually like dips down in the front. But the funniest thing was when I when I turned it on earlier, the radio. True. Old school. All right, let's take a look at the rear suspension tomorrow because it's already late at night. Later today. Later today. <laughs> That's the final setup. Front suspension is in. That's dialed in. Here the new location for the steering rods. New steering rods, I found them finally. <laughs> but yeah, it was quite some work to adjust all that stuff. Alright, so that's how it looks on this side. Still needs a wheel alignment and stuff, that's like just roughly right now. That's the back, so they are up all the way. Basically, adjust the height with this one. So we got the adjuster here for the stiffness in the back. I need to put them all the way maximum on hard. I think I got them like five clicks towards soft and the front is the opposite way basically. They're all the way at soft and then ten clicks into hard. But yeah, that's how it looks in the back. Okay, so that's what it looks like here. So we got some negative camber, but it's alright. Turn radius isn't everything we looked at already up. Put it a little bit higher. So we had I think it was 27 before. So we are evenly at 2478 in the front, left and right side. And in the back, we are actually at uh, we are not, not really that much lower. What is that? 27 and a three quarters, something like that. But yeah, so that's about it for the suspension. The next suspension video is when we put it actually on the alignment stand and uh, align everything. But uh, that's it for the suspension for today, and we're gonna see you next time. Okay.